So, hi students, uh, this is the OSCE on the hip. So, let's get started. So, you can get a uh, question based uh, or clinical uh, scenario based questions or questions like these, which are x rays or uh, uh, some spotter based questions. So, in this question, uh, he has showed you an x ray and asked you for a diagnosis. He has also put a pointer to the relevant radiological finding as well. So, question number one is what is the diagnosis? He has given you an AP and a frog like lateral view. Second question is describe the main clinical findings that you can see in the x ray. Also, the third question is, it's asked you to describe the radiological signs as well and asked you what specific view, view would you ask for this patient. And the fourth question is about treatment. Like if he fails conservative treatment, what will be the surgical options? Right. So he has shown an x-ray, asked about the clinical correlation in this disease. Related to it, the further radiological signs and then the management. So, if we have no idea about the diagnosis, we will not score in this OSCE. And majority of the OSCEs are like this, all or none phenomena. So, your diagnosis has to be correct. So, I'm moving to the next slide, sir. Please. So, it was very clear on the X-ray. The examiner has even pointed out the finding. The case is femoral acetabular impingement with a cam deformity. The cam deformity was shown in the first x-ray with a pointer right there. The, the next question is, what are the main clinical findings? So the answer for that will be, if you examine a patient with femoral acetabular impingement, the main clinical sign is lack of internal rotation in flexion. The patient will also have pain in this particular uh, position, which is called the painful or positive anterior impingement sign. When you flex the hip beyond 90, the hip will go into external rotation, which is an axis deviation. And the third, as I said, is the impingement sign, which is the reproduction of the same pain on flexion and internal rotation. So all these are the typical clinical findings of anterior impingement or femoral established impingement. Right. Next. The so third question is describe the radiological findings. So we'll go back to the x-ray that was shown. So in this x-ray, you can see this is the pistol grip deformity. If you can imagine the x-ray on the lateral view, just imagine this femur as a grip of a pistol. So this is a pistol grip deformity, which is very classical of femoral establer impingement. The other two signs are decreased head neck offset and increased alpha angle. So alpha More angle is the upper theoretical uh, thing that they should remember. Yes, so I will show the alpha angle in the next slide, which is the slide which shows the modified done lateral view. This x ray is the classical x ray needed for diagnosis of femoral established impingement. This is called modified done lateral view. This is done with hip in 45 degrees of flexion, 20 degrees of abduction, and, and neutral rotation. This is most sensitive to detect cam lesions. Now, on this, you can clearly see alpha angle, which is increased. Alpha angle is the angle subtended from a line joining the center of the neck to the center of the head, and the other line is the line joining center of the head to the point where the head loses its sphericity. The angle between these two lines is called alpha angle. 
it should be less than 50 degrees normally. But if it's more than 50 degrees, it is called increased alpha angle and is uh, same as it is the main uh, radiological sign for FAI or femoral establishment impingement. The third was decreased head neck offset. This is the distance between the radius of the femoral head minus the radius of the femoral neck. So if you see in this x-ray on the lateral view, it is more clearly seen on the lateral view. You draw a line on the anterior aspect running along the femoral head and then draw a line running along the femoral neck. The distance between these two lines from center of the head is called femoral head neck offset. And if you can clearly see in this, in this x-ray, on the anterior side, the offset is less as compared to the posterior side. Again, another classical finding for femoral establishment impingement. So let's go to the next, next question. The next question was, if the patient fails conservative management, what will be the treatment? The treatment in this case will be hip arthroscopy and femoral head neck osteoplasty. In cases with severe uh, femoral establishment impingement, Involving circumferential portion of the head, you may also think of going for surgical dislocation and osteochondroplasty. All right. So, this is about a topic that featured in the theory exam in the December DNB. Yes. Femoroacetabular impingement syndrome. So, there can be a correlation that you can get in the practicals as well. Now, we go to the second question. I'll read out the question. A deep sea driver presented to the OPD with complaints of the pain in the left groin with an antalgic gait. Remember, if they talk about the groin, it goes to the hip. And if they have to speak about the spine, they will talk about the pain at the back or the gluteal region. And with a deep sea diver, they are giving you a history of high pressure situations. So this is what you learn from the statement. What is your diagnosis? Describe the etiology. What is the classification system? Describe the treatment options. If you have such a question and you are not able to find out an answer, you must always try to look at all the options. Sometimes in the options later on, there's a hint to the diagnosis. But here it is not. But then you have an X-ray, which is accompanying. And that's a classical X-ray that any orthopedician should remember, and that too in a young individual. Dr. Ashish. So as Dr. Apoor said, the pointers are there already. Deep sea diver, groin pain, intalgic gait, and a classical MRI picture. So the diagnosis for this patient will be bilateral hip avian. Then the second question is, that describe the etiology. So, etiology in, in this case is decompression sickness or Kaysen's disease, which is again one of the etiologies of AVN. Third question is, what are the classifications of AVN? The two main classifications that we used is Piquet Arlet and Steinberg classification. Both option is treatment. Uh, what is the treatment option? So, various treatment options that we Use for AVN is number one, core decompression alone. Number two, core decompression with bone grafting, which can be a vascularized fibular graft or a free fibular graft. And number three is core decompression with stem cells. So these three are the main treatment options being used presently for AVN. Right. Coming to the third question. 30 year old male came with complaints of lack of sensation over the lateral part of thigh. Initially, he had pain followed by tingling and numbness. 
on examination there is a sensory that was present over the marked area the motor examination was normal so you have an area which is on the lateral aspect of the thigh sir has shown the shaded area where the presentation is this is a classical presentation that you get this question a lot of time in your exams as well entrance exams as well one of the very pet questions of dnb exams as well the structure involved the etiology and the treatment options over to you dr ashish so the pointers in this question will be only sensory involvement and the area involved so in this case the area involved is the area supplied by lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh so the diagnosis becomes Meralgia, meralgia parasitica. What can be the etiology? It can be caused by compression of the nerve due to obesity, due to old scar, tight belts, seat belts, or tumors. So as we know, it is due to compression or entrapment of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The nerve root involved is L2, L3. And final question was, what was the treatment? The treatment is either we go for conservative in the beginning with steroids and NSAIDs. If the patient continues to have symptoms, then we go for surgery, which can be decompression of nerve or resection of nerve. So just like myalgia parasitica, there's a term called as chiralgia parasitica, which is entrapment of superficial radial nerve in upper limb. So these are entrapment syndromes. that we are talking about classical presentation predominantly sensory presentation 